Uh, so one of the things that I would love you to talk about is, is how has your experience been at what I would consider to be a highly accomplished strength and conditioning coach in what's historically been a kind of a male dominated industry. You know, if you look at your resume, you'd think that you have 10 or 15 more years of experience <laughs> than you actually have at your, your young age. Um, it's really, really impressive. And, um, you know, we're seeing more women trying to get into the field, but it's, you know, for some of them, it might feel like an uphill battle or overwhelming. So talk a little bit about what your experience has been yeah. and, uh, you know, what advice do you have for an aspiring female SMC coach? Yeah, and I think, um, I think again, on reflection and getting older, like a big part of that I credit to, um, you know, my, my mom and dad in the, uh, I've been around sport my whole life. My mom's a very accomplished rugby player, which is not many female rugby players, yep. basketball player and tennis player. So she's a fantastic athlete as well as my dad is a strength coach. They always just kind of raised me and my sister to treat everything the same, that there was nothing that we couldn't couldn't handle and do. Um, and so venturing into the, the strength and conditioning field, initially it wasn't even something I really thought about. I don't think that it was you know, more of a male dominated area and how that would be viewed. Um, I think probably the biggest thing I've taken out of it is tr like adjusting that you don't need to try and be um, better than the men in the field to mm -hmm. do that. You just need to really own what you're good at mm -hmm. um, is really important. And so um, don't try to compare yourself and judge yourself in that way. Same as, you know, advice I would give to um, a male strength and conditioning coach that came to me and was like, hey, I'm wanting to start off. What does that look like? Like, just get really good and own what, what you like and what you specialize in, and then your talent's going to speak from there. And so if you're good at that, it's not going to matter um, your gender from there. Um, and I think that also gives you more confidence in, you know, at Linford walking in with the men's basketball team. And mm -hmm. uh, I feel really confident being like, we can chat about anything you want to know about any part of your program, what we're doing. You can ask me as many questions as you want. Um, because I, I know what I'm doing here. So that, that I think is, is probably my best advice. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. And you are also in a unique, uh, position or you've had a unique experience in that mm -hmm. you've worked in two settings that are both under the strength and conditioning or fitness umbrella, but are really quite different environments. Yeah. You've, you've worked or continue to work in the collegiate setting, working with college athletes and teams and they have an in-season and an off-season, and most of them are similar age group in that kind of 18 to 22 or whatever. Yeah. And then you also work in, we'll call it the private sector, yeah. where people, the, the customer has to pay for the, the training and the instruction. You, of course, have a huge range of ages and ability levels and all of these things now. Um, so maybe you can talk a little bit about the differences between those two, and then advice that you would have for anybody coming up uh, that might be interested in one versus the other. Yeah, I mean, I actually quite enjoy the the balance that um, I've managed to strike between the the collegiate and the um, private. Like, I love the collegiate because I was an athlete, and I know that feeling of wanting to train to be better and work harder. And so, I like that I can hopefully um, still relate to a lot of the athletes um, mm -hmm. and and speak to to true to them. But then it's really you know. A breath of fresh air to then come into the private sector and have somebody that's like you know I want to be able to um, walk my first marathon and things like that and so many different different expectations you know one lady I was trained that's like I would like to be able to walk up and down the stairs not sideways like straight up and down I'm like great like that's that's awesome um, and so the difference because it is it is 360 kind of um, complements each other really well because you mm -hmm. get a little break from from both um, I definitely find I get most excited with the collegiate stuff because it's all about, you know, their testing and their sports and that performance thing. Um, but then it's so nice to just kind of change pace a little bit and work a little bit more individually with, with people. So I actually encourage it. I think it makes you a better coach. I've learned, especially working in industrial, um, how to teach exercises better, um, from here because, not everybody um, that walks in this door has been in a weight room and trained and knows when you say, hey, get tight, like squeeze your core, they're not gonna know what that means. Yeah. And so working here has taught me, you know, how to better execute and explain those exercises. And I see that so much more at Linfield and not just assuming that everybody coming in is 
an advanced athlete and knows exactly what I'm talking about. So I think finding a mixture of both makes you a much better, much better coach. Yeah.